Guess who was in town to promote one of the biggest charity events in support of disadvantaged children? It's only the glorious Maria Bravo, the Marbellian actress, who has been based in Hollywood for the last few years. Hello there. I've got the great pleasure today to speak to one of the absolute originals coming from, Mar from Marbella, la chica famosa Maria Bravo, Maria. <laughs> Gracias por esa Thank you so oh much. my god it's my pleasure i'm so excited to speak to you today it's unbelievable Thank you. now you've come here for a massive purpose and i'm going to speak to you about this later but first i'd really like to find out a little bit more about you okay okay <laughs> now you now live in the states and uh, you know your journey was uh, not really a direct one but um oh. via madrid <laughs> shall we start right at the bottom it doesn't hurt don't worry now uh, maria's first love in life was dance is that right yeah i was uh, actually i'm um, half gypsy so there we create this atmosphere in my home where dance and singing is part of every celebration. Mm -hmm. In Christmas, in birthday, you dance or you sing, whatever mm -hmm. you want, but you mm -hmm. gotta do one or the mm -hmm. other. So uh, I love dancing. I love flamenco dancing. I love modern dances. So to be able to pay for my studies, I was in a company doing a tour throughout uh, Europe dancing. Wow. So that was my first passion, my first uh, really direct contact mm -hmm. with, the, with the entertainment industry. Did you uh, envisage fame and hard work like Joaquin Cortez? Not at all. Um, I was very low key. I love what I, what I did and I was good at it. But I didn't have that, um, you know, you have to be lucky also to be able to achieve fame. You have to be in the right time doing very good job to be seen by the right people and I, I did a great job but I wasn't famous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you still left Marbella and you went to Madrid? I did. I went to Madrid and I pursued my acting and my, and my dancing and after that I went to United States mm -hmm. and Los Angeles. Uh, being two I guess. Yes. <laughs> well I did fall in love with a Canadian um, and I just saw him and said, uh, he's going to be my husband. Like, just like that? Yes, literally. I was, I was engaged to somebody to be married and I saw this man. I was dancing. My God. In the first row, he was sitting down and I saw his green eyes and I said, that man, whatever his name is, is going to be my husband. Oh, qué pasión. <laughs> I think, you know when they say love at the first sight? That was love at the first sight. Uh -huh. I didn't know who he was, but the funny part, after the show, he came to the uh, dressing room. Oh, you felt your energy. Yeah, I said, I want to know you. Who are you? I said, I don't know, but who are you? Very funny. <laughs> and the next day, I broke up somebody's heart, my uh -huh. fiancé, and I, and I got engaged right away. Wow. To, yeah. What did your mom say? I said, you crazy woman. <laughs> But he met, she met him and she fell in love with Pierre. Uh -huh. That was his name. Uh -huh. Now when it's right in the yeah. And so a completely different life started for you over yeah. on the other side of the pond. Yeah. yeah, it just, we moved over there and we started a new life. The, I didn't speak the language, which was very hard. He spoke Spanish, French, Italian. He spoke seven languages, but I only spoke Spanish. Wow, so what happened to you? Is it the same uh, like what uh, Antonio Banderas had to go through? Because I mean, when he arrived in Hollywood, he had to learn the lingo uh, really hard. I went to school for six months, five hours a day, intense course, because I said I can't stay behind. I have to learn this language. So right away in six months, I was be able to communicate to start, you know, my university and to start working, doing different jobs. Mm -hmm. and and learn the language. And what were you reading at uni? I'm sorry? What were you reading at university? Oh my God, I remember I read The uh, Alchemist. That was my first book, funny enough, in the United States. Uh -huh. And for some reason, I said, this is very interesting. I am in the United States, I'm coming from Marbella, and I'm reading this book that really is about, you know, Andalusia. And, uh, and, and I was 
I, it was something interesting about that, that the connection that I will always be connected to my Spanish roots, mm -hmm. you know, even from all the way in the university in the in United mm -hmm. States, I was reading about my mm -hmm. hometown. Mm -hmm. Now, with Antonio, it was the case that, um, if I remember rightly, his agents put pressure on him to learn the language because he wouldn't get the work otherwise. Was that the same for you? Did you feel the, um, you know, this toughness out there in the streets when, if you don't speak the language, you won't get the part? Yeah, it's interesting because now it's fashionable and it's cool to have an accent. And it's cool to speak Spanglish. It's cool to be, you know, a Spanish somebody. but. Uh, before it wasn't, uh, we go to an auditions and they would say, oh, that was great, you were fantastic. But now, can you do it without the accent? I'm like, all right, let me come back in 10 years. And even though I never got my accent, it's part of me and I don't think it ever gonna go away. You know, I speak the language, but my accent is there. <laughs> After 25 years. Yes, it's, it's true. It does take time. But also, if it is part of your culture, you know, it's part of the charm. That's what I always think. Yeah. Well, I think that with you anyway. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Now, when um, work finally did come in for you, it was uh, movies first, then television. Tell us about the early part of your career. Um, I really started dancing and then I got a little bit into the entertainment industry with uh, soap operas. You know, I was perfect for soap operas. Latino soap operas, I did the, the American soap opera, The Ball and the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that was perfect for me. But then I finalized my studies and I was be able to be a stockbroker. So I took a, a real job, like a, I used to call it, a real job. And uh, I started working and going different countries to be able to to do my job and mm -hmm. and then something happened in my life my my first husband Pierre passed away after 10 years of marry and I decided to change my whole life okay yes and this is the man that I fall in love the first sight um, and I it, it changed my whole view of the world I say I don't want to be working in the financial industry I want to do what I'm passionate about and I started working again in charity and in, um, in entertainment, so uniting both worlds mm -hmm. to do something magical. And that's how mm -hmm. my next step in life started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, f when we talk about movies, we talk about um, very <laughs> famous scenes like The Kiss oh. with the gorgeous <laughs> Eva in Kalita Secret. Uh, what was that like? <laughs> Uh, it was fun. Oh, was it? <laughs> it was so much fun, I tell you. Because Eva and I, we became really good friends. Um, so we were shooting for about three months. The movie was uh, shot in different parts of um, Florida, Miami and Fort Lauderdale. And we became really, really good friends. So when the time of that scene came, I was making such a fun. Okay, I'm going in. Get ready. Are you ready? Because I'm going for it. <laughs> and we, we, I think we have to reshoot that scene probably 20 times. Because no every time way. we were going to kiss, we start laughing. Oh, like, you know, going to kiss. Too giggling. Too <laughs> and interesting enough, that day we had the set, the movie set. We had maybe 10 people watching every day. They just shooting. That day probably was like 16, 70 people watching My that giggle. scene. How did... <laughs> How did that go down in America, you know, being a slightly different kind of audience? How did they cope with this? Two uh, Latinos, hot girls, and uh, look what they're doing. Well, I think sex sells, and I think women, when it's beautiful, it sells. For the movie, it was fantastic. Um, for Eva and I, what it did is to create a really beautiful relationship. And the movie wasn't that good, that creates so much buzz because of the kiss. No yeah. way. Yeah. And uh, until today, when they do the life story, a Hollywood life story of Eva Longoria, they put the kiss and this, and she made a statement that I think she, she's not <laughs> until today. She said, "You see, Maria," she said that the the person that she, the best kiss she ever had, it was from Maria Bravo. And I said, you know, that's gonna. <laughs> That's how you. to upset the that husband. You, that is going to hand you down forever. So, um, but you know, it's all 
fun. Yes, of course. Yeah. But uh, it is an iconic scene in one way or another, isn't right. it? And of course, between the marriage breakup and the film, you had this other man in your life. Right. Oh God. We're talking about B.W. Oh, B.W. <laughs> Bruce uh, Willis. Yes. I had a, a beautiful relationship with him. He's a very fun and kind man. He came into my life after my, my first husband passed away. And it was a time when I was very vulnerable and he was very kind, very lovely. And he was divorcing. He, oh, he was actually divorced of the Moore. So we were in our lives in a similar place. But it's interesting to hear that because obviously under this really tough skin and you know rough image there's uh, obviously a different Bruce. Yes. Well you, you have to always see celebrity world is something that a label that you put to the celebrity. Bruce is a, the tough guy. Eva is the giggly funny, desperate housewife, but in fact there are people in those characters, they are at times had nothing to do with their characters. Yes. And at times, um, I wonder, uh, maybe overpowering as well? Yeah, and I'm sure that, you know, that Bruce and Eva, both of them, they take the fame really well. They know how to deal with it really well. And in other cases, it's not you know so good they take hollywood can make you a little bit cuckoo so a little bit a yeah. little bit so, <laughs> <Que broma. laughs> yes so if you don't know how to handle this fame it really you can get lost yes and um i, I reckon um uh, i read a lovely uh, little story um where, where the spanish press quoted your mum saying actually she's quite pleased that it's not any longer <laughs> so uh, he didn't go down too well with her, I guess. I love my mom. <laughs> she has no filter, none. I love her. Um, you know, she's my mom is a Spanish, very traditional woman, and having a movie star as uh, somebody who was pursuing me or in a love relationship with me, she wasn't very happy about. She wanted me. Like she said, she wanted a real man. Yes, for me. But uh, you very obviously have brains. And um, uh, I uh, read a couple of quotes where you said uh, yourself that actually there's much more to you than Bruce Willis. I've been almost my whole life in the United States. And all of a sudden, this Spanish woman is dating Bruce Willis. And, and who is she? Is she a model? Is she, you know, who is she? It's just the girlfriend of somebody. Um, they didn't get to meet who Maria was or who I am. And Sometimes people are not open to that at all once they know, oh, this is an actress, right. Right, but um, you know, it's now it changed and I'm happy about that because of the work that I do, they can give me the credit for what I do and who I am, not the person that I'm sleeping with. <laughs> oh my good God. And uh, changing subject quickly. <laughs> um, obviously, you've also put on the hat of a producer recently, haven't you? Yes. And how do you like that? I love it. Uh, you know, it's uh, something that I, I feel very comfortable mm -hmm. in. I love to manage projects. I like to create new ideas and put them together and follow through with them to make them uh, a reality. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Would you be looking towards particularly Spanish related subjects there, where you can definitely give you know, an extra portion of good experience yes. and knowledge? Um, and, and doing several projects, my main project is the Global Gift uh, Initiatives. And I'm doing it in seven countries. I do two, 12 events a year and I'm bringing together the world of philanthropy, celebrity and financial mm -hmm. um, entities and with ambassadors like Carlos Slim and uh, Will I Am and Deepa Chopra and, and David Beckham and Eva Longoria of course and, and people that really care to make a difference with their voices mm -hmm. without their voices and their power and their power they, these children that we are helping, they will not have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud and so passionate to 
be able to bring all that together mm -hmm. into one platform. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm, I'm very keen to find out more, but I would love to take you to, for a walk yes. to a really, really beautiful spot in this hotel, and we'll talk about the gift gala there. Absolutely. Shall we? Now that we've established a few facts about Maria, it's time to chat about the forthcoming Global Gift Gala, for which she will be back here in Marbella in August. The Global Gift Gala will come to Marbella on the 4th of August, when Maria will be joined by many of her famous friends, including Eva Longoria, and we'll look forward to chatting to them all then. Now then, continuing with all this excitement, we come to a very exciting part indeed of Maria Bravo's life, and that is her support unshattered support for all her charity work. Maria, now this time you're here in Marbella because of the Global Gift Gala. Tell us a bit more about that. Uh, the Global Gift Gala is a platform that I started three years ago. Um, now it became something international. It's, it's, it's an international platform with global ambassadors like Carlos Slim, Will I Am, David Beckham, Deepa Chopra, Antonio Banderas, Eva Longoria, a lot of the celebrities are supporting this platform and we do it in seven different countries all over the world. And right now we have on Monday, uh, May 13, we have it in, in Paris. So that's your next stop? Yes. Um, with David Beckham, we're giving him the philanthropic award ah, for his work. I was wondering, because he's obviously playing now for Paris Saint-Germain yes. and uh, not London. So that's interesting. What a right. twist. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You, you never know, right? Everything can change in, about in the world football, soccer um, world. Yeah. They're changing all the yeah. time. But he's a great philanthropist and we wanted to honor him. And what a better place right now than in France. And we want to really partner with him in England. As we well. have, yeah, as well, as uh, for his charity. This time we're giving him an award, but we want to benefit his uh -huh. his charity where UNICEF. That's yeah, very clever. Yeah, and we try to do that every year. Vicente del Bosque, we benefit last year here, uh -huh. and and this year, well, last year we give him an award, the humanitarian award, and this year we benefit his foundation. So we are always trying to continue um, what we start with people that support us. Mm -hmm. After Mabea, you're off to London. Now yes. tell us what's been planned for London. London is very excited. This is our fourth, fifth year in London. Okay. We have partnering before with the uh, Princessing of Brunei, who was our benefactor. And last year we, we uh, united forces with uh, John Colwell of Colwell Children and also Five for Life, which is for children as well with cancer. And, and they are amazing association. This year we trying to unite forces with David Beckham and, and UNICEF and also we will with John Colwell. Um, it's going to be November 23rd. Where is it taking place? It's going to be in Mi Hotel, oh, Melia. Very cool. Which is beautiful. I mean, those, you know, the, our supporters, like the Mi Hotel, they give everything for free. Incredible. Everybody in the Mi Hotel have provide everything from rooms to the meal for the event, the venue, the service, everything, so we can fundraise the most for this foundation. And those are also our heroes because they allow us to do what we do. Yes. Well, um, I'm in awe of you, of what you do, and um, you are such a nice person. It was absolutely super to talk Thank to you about you. this, and I wish you all the best of luck Thank with you. everything in the planning. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Maria. Bravo.